spare time outside of work, you may find me at a tea shop, uh, geeking it out on my laptop, trying to learn some new technique uh, to help me out with my data analytics skills. But in addition to that, I'm also an avid strength athlete. So you may find me in a gym, you know, working on trying to develop functional strength. Right now, I've been kind of hit and miss in the gym. So my form may look like the guy on the right, but I'm working on getting back to being the beast in the gym like this guy on the left here. So you guys say, Ryan, that's enough about yourself. You know, teach me about R and Power BI. Show me ways where I can leverage R and Power BI Power BI and do things that natively are not possible with just using the tools that are built into Power BI. Well, one of the things you can do is you can use R and Power BI to bring data into your data model. You may be saying that, Ryan, I can already do that. I have a great tool in Power BI called Power Query, which allows me to get data from dis disparate data sources, whether it be databases, flat files, Microsoft Excel files, I can get that data and shape it, make transformations to it and bring it to the Power BI data model. So why do I need R? Well, there are things you can do in R that you can't do in Power Query. One of those things is you may want to apply a algorithm that you, your data analyst or your data scientist built that was built in R and you apply that data to your, you'll use that algorithm to score data that you want to bring into Power BI. You can't do that in Power Query. If you can, it'd probably be super inefficient and it will, you know, it, it wouldn't be something that you can productionize. In addition to that, there are data wrangling tasks that are possible in R that are not possible in Power Query. Just like BI professionals, data scientists and data and statisticians, one of their biggest task is to cleanse and shape the you know data that they do their analysis on and R has been around since the early 90s and given that statisticians and and data scientists have to cleanse and shape their data they've been doing this for a long time using R and with R you can extend R with packages and currently there are over 12,000 to 500 packages and crane that data scientists and data analysts and other R users can use. So given that there may be a package or may be features in R that allow you to do things that you can't do in Power Query. Another thing, and this is, may not be a big deal to some, but may be a big deal to other. I was at past summit this past year and I was in the talk and one of the guys asked if, uh, if you can use Power Query to write out data to a database or to, you know, to a flat file? And the answer to that is no. R is used to, I mean, Power Query is used to read in data and to shape and cleanse data, but you can't write out information. If you wanted to log information about your data loads into Power BI, you can do that with R. You can write out information to a database using R, using via the RODBC package. You can write out information to a flat file using packages such as the read R package. So you can write out information and log information with R, but that capability is not available in Power Query. Another thing you can do with R within Power BI, and this doesn't necessarily require you to use R within Power BI, you can use Power Query in this manner, is that if you want to productionize your data science algorithms and use that, those algorithms to score data that you're bringing into the Power BI data model, you can use SQL Server Machine Learning Services. And fortunately with um, SQL Server Machine Learning Services, it makes it easier to productionize this process. So you have the ability to use the same model that we will demonstrate in this uh, demonstration with a little bit of code refactoring. You can use those models within SQL Server from a R store procedure. And then if you're dealing with bigger data sets, there are functionality built into SQL Server. One of those is the RoboScale R package that allows you to take advantage of not just the memory that's on your SQL Server database, but also the disk space that your SQL Server database has. So that allows you to work with very big data sets and new to uh, SQL Server 2017, you have the ability to use uh, a function called or a method called native scoring, which is 
a feature that uses a predict function and it works very fast. We don't have the time to go into the details of that, but you have multiple ways to leverage R in your SQL Server database, which can be a source data for your Power BI uh, data model. So that's one way we can use R, you know, to bring in data into the model. We can also use R in a transformation step in Power Query. So say you have a situation where you need to create a, an advanced calculated column. An example of that would be a column that is based off of some custom function that requires a lot of math, some, a lot of complicated math. Well, to do that in Power Query, you know, it may be possible, but won't, it would not be as inefficient as doing it in R because with R, you can take advantage of a method called vectorization. And that, uh, in a nutshell, means that you're able to apply a function over a column of the data in a, a way that's similar to the set-based operations in SQL Server, where you plan it all at once and not in an iterative process the way you do it in Power Query. So that right there makes calculations much faster and also the code itself. Because R is a language written by statisticians for statisticians, it lends itself to math very easily. Another way you may want to use R as a data transformation step in Power Query is there may be a function that's available to R, available in R that is highly optimized that you can use that, are not, that is not available in Power Query. So in, in that instance, you can leverage that R, the R package and use that function within the transformation step of Power Query. Last but not least, you can use R to create some amazing custom visualizations. Visualizations that if you went and, and did it the traditional route of creating a, a custom visualization will require much more complicated code and will be much harder to do. So what are we going to do in this session? I will show you how you can bring in score data into your Power BI data model. Uh, so we're going to you know, have an algorithm that was pre-built for, uh, for us by our data scientists, and we're going to use the algorithm to bring it into, uh, to bring in score data into the Power BI data model. We're also going to show how we can bring in multiple files into the Power BI data, mat, uh, data model based off of a regular expression. So we are going to develop a regular expression that matches the the, the type of pattern we want our files to be, the, the, the file names to be. And based off of that, we will only select the files in our folder that matches that regular expression, and we will, we will bring in those files to Power BI. Also, we will create a custom column, a, calculate, a custom column that is based off of a calculation that would be hard to implement in Power Query and will also will not be as performant in Power Query as it is in R. Last but not least, we will show some examples of some custom visualizations. We're not going to go and show how to build the these custom visualizations from scratch, but the purpose of that will be to give you some ideas of some of the things you will be able to do in R in terms of uh, using R to build custom visualizations. So now time for some live code. Let's go over to the code. That's not what I want. Okay, let's close out this and go to Visual Studio. So what I'm going to do is show you some code snippets of the type of things you can do in R. And we're going to give you an example of how to, you know, bring, you know, leverage those things in Power BI. So the first thing we're going to do is go over how to score data using an R model in Power BI. So in this script that you see here, what we're doing is we're predicting whether a person will buy a bike based off of, you know, different characteristics about that person. So with that being said, <clears throat> the first thing we need to do in this um, 
in Visual Studio is set our working directory. Now, many presentations you all have seen, you may have seen people do their presentations in R Studio. Many do, do not know that Microsoft have, has developed a, an add-in in Visual Studio car, called RTVS. RTVS stands for R Tools for Visual Studio. And because this is a Microsoft-based presentation and because I do most of my work within the Microsoft Data Platform, this is my go-to IDE for R. Um, it, it works perfectly fine for me. I have no issues with it. So we have a solution here. And what, what the first thing I need to do to make sure this script works correctly is I need to set my working directory to this location. So now that I have my working directory set to that location, I can begin to execute this script. So the first thing we do is load the package that we will be using in this um, presentation. Now just execute the rest of my code. And what this code is doing is right here, I'm loading in the model that my data scientist built for me that will save to disk. And I'm bringing in the data set that I want to score. And then the code beneath that, without going into too much detail, this code will be freely available to all of you all. It will be posted on my GitHub site, and you see that we, I have a lot of comments in it to explain what is going on. But the code that's highlighted is where I'm doing my feature engineering, and once I get my data in the shape that it needs to be, I take my model and I apply my model against that data in this line right here where I'm using the predict function from uh, base R. So that right there, you know, I score my data, and we can look at the uh, results of this. It's a, um, the model was based off of what is called a logistic regression model, which gives you the probability of the, an event occurring. And you see that on the right, all my predictions are made, with zero being unlikely to occur and one being likely to occur. So you'll see how uh, these things play out. So, you know, now that we have our script working and functional, the next thing we do, we go over to Power BI, and I need to open up my Power BI file. Apologize. Before the technical difficulties, I had this all open and set up a right before the meeting. My computer crashed. I got the blue screen of death. That would happen on a day like today. But <clears throat> now that I have this open, we go over to Power BI and go to Edit Queries. Now, I already did this for the meeting, but you'll see that you have a process of going to from get data to you, you select the R script, you paste in your code, and your code is pasted into an editor that looks like this. Uh, once we do that, we set our working directory because Power BI has a different working directory than uh, than the the uh, project that we were, we were working on in, in 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 Visual Studio. So once we get our code, and we verify that our code is functional. We paste it here, and you notice that after that point, the code is available to us in Power BI as a data set. So let me edit permission. I don't know if this is going to run. And it, after it um, executes our script and go through wherever data transformations that we apply to in our query, it will be exposed to us as a data set. So we'll see what's going on. Normally it doesn't take this long to run, probably due to the crash that occurred earlier. But yeah, there we go there. So this is the, uh, the score data that we have. We scroll we'll go over to the right, you'll see that we have our score data. So now let me close out of this. And we see that we have a data set that was brought into Power BI, and it has scored data. One of the questions that was asked prior to the meeting was, we have uh, a situation with you know our visuals in Power BI, where we have our visuals in Power BI that predicts um, uh, 
make predictions on time series type of data that, you know, uh, uh, it makes forecasts on financial data. And the person who asked the question said, it's nice to have that visual, but what if I want the data that's behind that visual, the, those predictions? Uh, is there a way I can do that type of thing in, in R? And the, and the question is, yes, if you want to use that type of information in R, what you'll do is you'll do what we did here and score the data on an ingest you know, while you're bringing the data into Power BI. And if you're interested in, in doing forecasts with uh, data in Power BI, there are tons of pack packages out there that allow you to forecast your data. And one of the one of those packages, the name of it is Profit. Profit is a package written and authored by Facebook, the Facebook team, their data scientists. They have a version of the package available in Python and a version of the package available in R. And, and with that, not only do you get the forecasted predictions, but you also get a lower and upper bound range data that you can use in your Power BI data model in your measures. And that's what I did here. So with the with uh, the data that we brought in to score data, I was able to build some measures on top of it. And one of those measures is the number of byte buyers. I'm able to calculate or account the individuals that were actually by buyers. And what I did was, since we have a probability between zero and one, I said that the probability was greater than 0 0.5, then that person is a by buyer. So that this uh, DAS function, I'm able to use against data that was created in R, and I can use that data to create a measure. And then I can also build something like this, a little simple R visual that I mean, Power BI visual that allows me to see uh, these different cohorts of people, you know, um, how the situation plays out in terms of, you know, who are my bike buyers. And in this, it seems like the most likely to buy a bike are single people that's making over $100,000. So that's that. So we've learned how to bring in score data into the Power BI data model. Now let's learn how this go over. Close minimize this. Let's go over how to bring in, in multiple files using the regular expression to the Power BI data model. So we do that. We go to this regular expression project. And remember, remember, we need to set our working directory so R knows where to begin to work from. So we set our working directory to that project. We're going to open up this script right here. And what this script, what I want to point out to you in this script is the ability to use regular expressions. So let me make sure that our data is good. Good. Okay, so in this file, in, in this directory, what we have are a list, is a list of files that represents data from the BLS. Now that the Underlying data is not important. What is important is that what we want to do is we only want to match files that represents a state name. And looking at the files that represents a state, we will see some similarities in all those files. We see that it starts off with this right here, with this string, la.data.21. But after that, there are some other um, files that have the same uh, structure, meaning that it starts with the la.data dot some numeric value. There are some files that starts with that, like here, where you have the same, you know, a pattern in the beginning, but towards the end, it doesn't represent a state. So there is a regular expression method called negative look aheads. And pretty much what that means is you're able to match a string that you know, uh, the beginning part of the string matches a certain pattern, but then you can peek into the remaining part of that string and see if, if the um, if that string contains some type of pattern that you don't want. If it contains that pattern that you don't want, it negates that that regular expression. If it does, uh, if it does not meet that pattern, then it will include that file. So here in our negative look ahead, you see that. These are the things that we don't want to include. Anything that starts with current, anything that starts with all, anything that starts with region, and so on and so forth. That is easy to do in Power Query, I mean, in R, but when you start getting into situations where you need to do some type of advanced 
uh, string match, and you can't do that uh, very uh, easily in Power Query. So the use of regular expressions can be used in this situation where you want to combine files, or you can use it in um, a situation where you're in Power Query and you need to do some type of string manipulation, like you, or like you, say for instance, you may want to test whether a column that you have that has that has uh, email addresses. You want to see if those email addresses are in the valid format or not. You can use R within Power BI in that sense where you can get a regular expression that will um, match a, a uh, valid email address and use that within Power BI. So in this situation, you'll see that once we apply this regular expression to it, if we were to inspect this, you see that now we only have um, files that contains the type of pattern that we want wanted and then after that we can run through this code here which is iterating through those list of files and combine them all those files into one data set so now that we have that in one data set we can preview that data we can go over to our solution explorer i mean not our variable explorer and go to this right here was well, not showing up as what well, we can view. We can just view it here. And you'll see a preview of the data. It's just some BLS data that we will ultimately need to combine with others. But you see that we're able to combine all that information into one file. That, that's the takeaway that we want from here. And once we get our code functional, just like before, we will just need to set our working directory to where the data is because again the working directory is different in R is copy and paste our code go to Power BI put into that R script and then voila we now have the data available to the Power BI data model and because we're going um, we're kind of short on time we're going to go through the examples fairly quickly uh, so that we can get through the presentation so the next thing I want to show is the distant calculation, not the history that I want to show. I want to show you the script. So we double click on that. So this distant calculation is based off of what is known as the Haversine formula. And it's a formula that you can use to calculate G, um, geograph uh, distances between two geographical points. Now, this type of calculation is math intensive, and I've seen people implement this formula in T-SQL. I've seen people implement this formula in Power Query. But those two tools are not good uh, tools to use when calculating something like this. Is This type of stuff is best done in a programming language like R, a programming language like Python. So here is an example where we're able to uh, first we you know set our you know load our the, the package that we use and tidyverse for those of you that's new to R tidyverse is the best place to, to start. I'll be doing some blogs on this in the future. It's a group of packages written by this uh, guy named Hadley Welcome. Very good place to start when you're talking about leveraging uh, R and then trying to learn R. So here we this is where our custom function is. So we define this custom function. Now, even if this looks like this code looks a little scary to you, I guarantee you if this was uh, recreated in Power Query, it will look even scarier. So we define our code now using dplyr, a very popular package in R, uh, using a function from that package called a mutate function. We're able to project or create a new calculated column on that data set that will calculate the distance. Now it says drop off lat not found. Let me see if I load in the data. Okay, that's what we, I, I guess we didn't set our working directory. So let's go over and set our working directory to the distant project, distant calculation project, set the working directory here. Now let's see if this works. Now we're good. We already got our function loaded. 
So now we have a data set and we can just print this out to our repo. And for those, for those of you new to R, repo stands for read, evaluate, print, loop. This is the data set. And you see that uh, um, at the end, we have the trip distance. Let's go to our variable explorer, our TASI data, and we get a better look. This is another thing I like about our uh, TVS is, look, you can uh, print your data set back out to uh, Microsoft Excel or in a CSV file. So over to the right, to the far right, you see that we were able to project or add a new calculated column to our data set that calculates the distance between those two points. Now, the way we can leverage this as an R is we can copy it, this data set, into the uh, Power BI uh, data model, or we could go into a data set that had this data. And many of you may have seen in Power Query on the far right of your home tab, no, I think it's transformation tab, your transform tab, you'll see a big R. And people are like, what is this R for? Well, this R is for R. And if you click on that, what happens is you the, the, the data set that you built up to the point of where you are in your transformation steps, it will pass that data set to R as a data frame. And once R has that data as a data frame, you can make transformations to that data set within R using all the power of R. Once you make those transformations in R, you need to make sure that your the result of that script also results in a data frame. And that data frame will be exposed back to R that you can add back to your data model. Because of uh, the sake of time, we're not going to be able to go over each one of those steps thoroughly. So we got that. So now let's let's do this. Let's, uh, we went over that, and I showed you this is an example of how we can bring in score data. And again, we, we can just know you can get much more complicated than what we we're talking about. In this presentation, I'm just trying to give you ideas of some of the things you can do. Now, as a data analyst as, or as a data scientist, this method that we use here, you would use that more for prototyping. When you get to the point where you want to productionize your model, where you want to put it to production, I'm being redundant, but you, once you want to productionize your model, you can then start leveraging the things that will allow you to do data science at an enterprise level. Things like I mentioned earlier, SQL Server Machine Learning Services and SQL 2017 or SQL Server R Services in 2016. So now let's get to the fun part. We are in Power BI and Power BI is known for um, data science. It's, it's, no, Power BI is known for data visualization. So I'm pretty sure you all would like to know how you can leverage R within Power BI uh, to create some amazing, amazing custom visualizations. So let's get to some of those type of examples. So first, let me get to the folder that has that, go to Promatic Works. We can open up this. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do now, I can't, with the sake of time, I can't teach you in an hour, in, in 30 minutes, how to uh, create custom visualizations in R uh, within Power BI, but I can give you some ideas of some of the things that you can do. So, <clears throat> I mean, even if I was the guy I mentioned earlier, uh, Hadley Wilkham, which is probably one of the best educators when it comes to R, and, and probably one of the guys that knows the most about R, even if I was him, I couldn't do that. So um, let's get to some examples, and then hopefully what these examples will do, it will get you started thinking. One of the things I want you to do as you look at what I'm showing you, you may not have an exact need for what I'm showing you, but what I want you to do is, wow, if Ryan can do what he just showed me leveraging, you know, uh, by leveraging R within Power BI, then maybe I can do some of these other things that in the past I thought was impossible. So now let's talk about some of these visualizations. What we're looking at here is a visualization built in Power BI, and it's using the regular line chart in the, uh, that's available to us in Power BI. Now, one of the things that's, um, this is based off of GDP data that I got that dates back to 1980, and then the tail end of it projects data out to uh, a little bit beyond 2020. Now, 
now this data shows GDP data for all of the G19 countries looking at trying to visualize this in a line chart it is super busy it's hard to distinguish between any country other than uh, the US maybe China and Japan other than that all the other countries are grouped together in a super busy line chart there is a visual a visual in R that would make visualizing this much easy easier and it's called the facet chart let's go and look at an example of it here we have an example of a facet chart at the finished rendering and in this what it, what it does what a facet chart does is it creates a mini char for each uh, element of your chart. So in this case, our element is the country. So each country has its own individual chart. So it's easy to see what's going on with each chart. You see that the scale is the same for all of the different rows in this facet chart, and each uh, chart is broken out individually. Another nice thing about this is that if we want to pie, you know, a uh, if we want to do some things that are available to us in Power BI, like you know, filters, those filters will propagate over to our visualization. So if we want to look at advanced economies, uh, it will take a little bit for the chart to render, but you'll see that the chart will render, you know, just for the uh, countries that are considered advanced. If we want to compare two countries, say we want, say we want to compare China and the uh, United States side by side you see that we can easily do that using built-in functionality that's available to us in Power BI along with um, some of the, the, the uh, visual that was built in R. Now one of the things I want to point out to you about this chart is the, the minimum amount of code that it took to, to, to build this chart. Um, if you build a chart in Power BI you have the options of two editors. You got the option of this editor right here which you see is not a good place to do any development at. But in the video that Leela, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, uh, the video that she did a couple weeks ago, she went over the setup of how you get your environment ready in Power BI uh, for R. And one of the things is that you need to tell R what uh, IDE you want to use. When you tell R what IDE, IDE you want to use, if you click this arrow right here, it will open up the IDE, take the data that you are using to build your chart, it will persist that data to disk and allow you to use that data within your IDE so that you can troubleshoot the code and be in an environment that's more conducive to development. So right here you see that it you know passed in the data into a data set, a data frame that, that it's called data set. Now you can use this throughout to troubleshoot your code. The reason why I'm showing you this data is to show you the minimum amount of code that was required for this chart. Up here, we have the ability to do dynamic chart titles. Uh, the chart title that you saw was contingent upon a selection that you made. But to actually build the facet chart, the majority of the code is right here. That's what, 17, that's like four, five lines of code. That's all it took to build the majority of that chart. And one of the things I want to point out to you in this chart is this uh, theme. And G, built into ggplot, this library right here, are themes. You, you know, themes is, uh, it's a, uh, it, it allows you to control your non data elements, things like the chart title, you know what I'm saying, the background color, things of that nature, the non-data element uh, features on your chart. And because we're, we were working with financial data, economic data, I chose to use the theme that is based off of the magazine, the, the publication called The Economist. There are other you know, popular themes out there in the GG Themes package, which is one of the packages that are available in the Power BI service. And one of those themes is the, a theme based off of principles by a famous uh, data visualization guy named Edward Tufte. So you can just you know, apply one line of code after you build your chart that say, you know, I want the theme for Edward, Edward Tufte, and it will 
uh, repaint your 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 chart to meet the the best practices that you know that that Edward Tufty believes you should do, like you know white space and all the other types of stuff that makes a visual easy for end users to decipher. So that is that visual. Let's close out this when you apply any changes. So now let's go to another chart that we've seen a lot. We've seen the magic quadrant uh, chart a lot being BI professionals in the Microsoft community. And I think that the magic quadrant uh, chart is a great chart to use when you're trying to rank some based off of two attributes. In this uh, situation, they're ranking BI vendors based off of the ability to execute and the completeness, the completeness of vis uh, vision. We can create this type of chart using R and Power BI. Now, now, I understand there is a visual out there in the store that, that, that you can use for a quad chart, but I'm going to show you how we can use R and how we can add data elements on our quad quad chart that it'd be hard to do. Like for instance, we can mimic these annotations over here where we're describing each of the quadrants with the upper left being challengers, upper right being leaders, and so on and so forth. And we can also do things like have make sure that the descriptions of our Y access and the descriptions of our um, S access are you know at the corner and we can even add little things like this upward upward arrow and the sideways arrow uh using r but to do that same thing in native power bi it will be super complicated so for my example of this what i'm going to do is show you how we can rank running backs that went to the nfl combine using the quad chart so let's look at that so in this visualization I got data from a website that ranked that 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 uh, had information about the performance of running backs at the combine, and this data dates back from calendar year 2010 to calendar year 2017. So, what I was able to do using R that will be hard to do using the native features is that the things that we saw in the quadrant chart, excuse me, like being able to have our, um, the descriptions for our S access and Y access, the way they are with the arrows included and all, we can do this easily in R. And also with the annotations having, you know, here I said, if a person is in, in, is in this category, I can consider them fast. If they're in this category average and then the far right meaning that they did uh, well in the 225 pound bench press they're strong but if they're up here in this quadrant in the upper right they fast and strong i put them at beast mode so we can do this you know in power bi and but to try to do this i mean we can do it in r but to try to replicate the same thing in power bi would be hard to do and in addition to this our visual being how it is we can now take advantage of the features in Power BI where we want to see, okay, I see Ryan, what happened in 2015, but show me what happened in, I mean, 2017, but show me what happened in 2015. With a click of a button, it will render that chart and we will now have what the situation was in 2015. Uh, one of the things that I like to point out is that I like to, you know, be very descriptive with the titles of my chart. This title is dynamic. It's based off of the selection that's made. Um, and one of the things that I also want to point out about this, I'm not going to show the code because of time, but in order to do this chart, the data need to be on the same scale. Now, the proxy I used for speed was the 40-yard dash time. And the proxy that I used for strength was the 225 pound bench press, the number of reps that they did with that. Those are obviously on two different scales, but because Microsoft opened up the window and gave us the ability to use R in Power BI, I can leverage a package in R that is, is called the BBMICS. MISC uh, package and that package uh, has a function in there called normalize and that normalize function allows you to normalize data so using that function I was able to get to put my 40 yard dash times 
and my the number of reps they did for the 225 pound bench press all on the same scale. Now the data is in a format that I can use for a chart like this. So the next visualization I want to show is the GDP visualization. And this is a visualization that I like, not necessarily for the usefulness, but being able to show, well, being able to show the amount of the the, the the, the amount of information in one chart. In this chart, I'm showing five dimensions of data. The first dimension of data I'm showing in this uh, chart for each country is their land area you, uh, via the y-axis. The second uh, dimension of data I'm showing is the population using uh, the s-axis. The third dimension is the color of the border, which tells me if that country is advanced or emerging. The fourth dimension is the uh, intensity of the blue that's inside of the circle, which tells me how that country falls on the human index scale. And the fifth dimension is the um, size of the bubble, which shows me how big that particular GDP statistic, uh, GDP statistic is for that given year. That's a lot of dimensions of data shown in one chart. Now, you may be saying, looking at this, man, Ryan, this thing is so busy. Look how everything is grouped up here in, the, in this corner. Many of you know way back, if you go back to grade school, that you learned some data transformation techniques. And one of those was, uh, you know, uh, if you take the log of one of those data transformation uh, techniques you learned was logarithmic transformations. If we do a logarithmic transformation on this data, it will show us what the true, or give us a better representation how this situation is playing out. Using R, I can easily switch between the two scales. I can do so by this selecting uh, the filter where I say I want to apply a transformation. And R will return to me a transform uh, a chart that's, that, that you know, shows the data points not all grouped together because we're able to apply a logarithmic, logarithmic transformation to it. I know that in a few videos ago, in Guys in the Cube, Adam Sasson mentioned that there are there have been some updates made to the uh, to Power BI. Uh, that makes doing large transformations on the uh, uh, on your uh, access on your wire or s access easier to do, but this feature has been available in R for some time now. The last visualization I want to show you is the first visualization uh, that I made when this visual uh, when, when this feature became available to us in Power BI. I, I want to say back in 2015, and after it gets through rendering, what this visualization is, is a visualization that shows how um, the, shows the situation of our trade deficits with other countries throughout the world. And now, what this uh, visualization is showing us is that in 2014, based on this economic data that I was able to, to get from the internet, uh, from a government uh, website, shows us that our deficit in calendar year 2014 was 727 billion, negative. Uh, so we wanna know how that played out. One of the things I was able to do using the R visual is break out the situation into four different cohorts, with one being a, a group of countries that had a bad experience with us in terms of trade uh, deficit from the American side, the same thing with a uh, um, you know, group of countries, okay, good and bad. Now with this, I'm able to give the person who's digesting this information, information about um, how we arrive at this big number right here. We'll see that here we, we have a, a chart that's popular by many statisticians called a box plot that's overlaid with a violin plot. Now, box plot is one of the best visualizations to use to show dispersion of data. But what happens with a box plot, you don't know where majority of your, where your data is concentrated at. So when you overlay the box plot with a violin plot, you will see where the majority of your data is at. And then also with the, you know, with the whiskers and, and then the, the dots, you'll see where your outliers are as well. But 
even with that, I can't, I don't know how many data points. I know where they're, how they're being distributed, but I don't know how many are in there. I have no way with just using the box violin plot, you know, which one has the most data. The one of the nice things with R is that you can add annotations. And with annotations, I'm able to tell in this group, we had 92 countries. And those 92 countries represented this trade deficit. And the same thing with these other four countries. And then you'll see how we arrive. These numbers right here will add up to this number right here. And then you see on the outside, you know, things that you already are familiar with with Power BI that you can use to, you know, work, you know, uh, you know, use to enhance this visualization. If we want to go to another calendar year, say we want to go to uh, 2013, select that, you'll see that our number right here using a dynamic title in Power Query, I mean, and, and DAS, based off of DAS, you'll see what our deficit was for that year, how many countries were involved, and then these numbers down here for the trade deficit will add up to this number here, and these numbers down here will add up to the 234 that we see here. So this is an example of you, you know, the, uh, of the types of visualizations, you can get very creative and you can create some sophisticated visualizations in R that would be much easier to do. Some publication quality visualizations in R that would be much easier to do in R than if you were to build a custom visualization using one of the uh, native features of Power BI. So with that being said, do we have uh, any questions? You have quite a bit of questions in here. Can you see them, Ryan? Okay, let me go over to the... If you go right underneath the questions tab, I can read some off for you. Um, yeah, be, uh, you can do that, that'd be perfect. Let's see, let's see. And I'm gonna tell you, if uh, I'm, a, I'm a consultant, so if I don't know the answer, I'm just gonna say the, it depends. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So let's just honest. Someone said, can you clarify the difference the difference relationship between Power Query and Power BI? Okay, can you uh, repeat that question, please? Yeah, no problem. It says, can you clarify the difference relationship between Power Query and Power BI? It's from Jonathan Crawford. Hey, nice to meet you, Jonathan. I think they're, they're, they're compliments. And the majority of the cases in Power BI, you will be able to use Power Query to do whatever data transformation that you need to do. What I recommend you do is when you get to a point when you're trying to do a data transformation in Power Query and it seems like it's impossible or super hard to do, I recommend that that is the time where you want to start looking to R for the, for the solution. So most of your simple things I mean, with the uh, interfaces available to you in Power Query, you can do a lot of amazing things with just Power Query. But when you get to those situations where things get difficult, that's when I think that you should look into using R. All right, perfect. And there's another question that says, what version of Visual Studio do you have any add-ins to use R? Uh, I have an uh, old version on my machine right now, 2015, uh, but it, it, it made, it, RTVS was made available in 2015, but it's been, you know, enhanced, and, uh, you know, I recommend if you were to use RTVS, to, you know, get, go to Visual Studio 2017 uh, and use it in that, uh, in that version of Visual Studio. Uh, okay, so another question, this is from Jonathan as well, it says, can you point to an R script rather than cut pasting the query into the Power Query window? No, no, you can't do that. You got you to gotta get your code functional, and once you get your code functional, then you need to copy and paste it into that, uh, into that window. You can't. Uh, you know, you can probably do some funky stuff, and I wouldn't recommend it. Like, there's a, a function in R called source where you can have um, a file, you know, saved on your disk, and you can tell, you can pass to that source uh, function the file path of uh, our script, and then it will just read that. That'd be the only way you can probably point to something, but other than that, you need to copy the code in. And that source function, what it is doing is it's sourcing. Uh, the R script, you know, based, you know, that's saved in in, in, a, in a flat file. 
Okay, so there's a question from Willie. He says, should I use Crane or Microsoft R? I'd say you should use the Microsoft R because Microsoft, all it is, is a what they call a downward distribution of R. So what they, you know, it, it's not taking anything from what's on Crane. It's just taking what what's on Crane and it's adding additional functionality to it. Um, and I also recommend that you use um, MRO. Microsoft R open versus R from Crane because it's the same situation where it's just, you know, base R with, you know, additional features built down to it. And one of the things is the uh, math libraries. And the math libraries, um, and a lot of the data science algorithms you use, you got to do a lot of math intensive stuff like linear algebra and things of that nature. And it does that in a much more performant way. So I recommend to use uh, Crane. Because they have daily snapshots of the, I'm not Crane, but M, uh, MRAN, you know, to get your, uh, your, 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 your files. They have daily snapshots of the um, Crane repository dating back uh, some years. I don't know what the first date was. And also, I recommend they use Microsoft R Open instead of the uh, R from Crane. Okay. I'm going to go through a few more here. It says uh, from... Oh, forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong. Krishina, can you please share the report files and the data? She wants to know if you can share those. Yeah, all that would be in the – will we have a blog or anything like that where I can uh, – because I have a GitHub repository set up with the Visual Studio uh, solution mm -hmm. that has all the projects that we went over as well as the um, – the, uh, um, Power BI, uh, PBIS file, so I can share that with everyone after uh, this uh, presentation, and you have you can you know download that you know you can clone that repository and have fun with it. Okay, perfect. And just let all you guys know, um, these are all recorded, and you guys will all receive a link in case I see that some of you guys ran out of sound or you guys couldn't hear for a little bit. Um, but everything was previously recorded, and you will get a link to the recording in your email tomorrow. So don't worry about anything like that. So just in case you're missing something, you can always go back because we do record them and we do send them to you guys. Um, I'm going to go through another question. It says, um, this one's from Kingsley, the violin box plot visualization, was it created in Power BI or R? R. I can show you the code real quick. Uh, we, you know, click on here. It's all using a pack. It's all using a a library called the ggplot library. And uh, we can put this out. We scroll down. It's open up Visual Studio right now, but you see the code here. So before we go any further, uh, one of the things, this is the code here. I want I like to show you all some recommended uh, resources to get you started, you know, down the uh, good path with R. Uh, let's go. With uh, R, R for Data Science, this book right here is freely available to you on the internet. You just Google R for Data Sciences. There's a PDF version, but if you like me, I like to have a hard copy of it. You can go to Amazon, order it there. And the same guy, he wrote the package, uh, ggplot. Now it's open, and let's go back to this visualization. Uh, he wrote a book. Hey, Ryan, you still there? Okay, guys, I think we lost him. Um, but as I stated, uh, thank you for attending the webinar. This was R and Power BI Beyond the Basics. Um, if you guys have any further questions, you guys will receive a link with the webinar um, from today. Um, tomorrow and all of Ryan's information in case you guys want to reach out to him, ask him any questions or have any um, 
different things that you guys maybe missed in this webinar. Um, but thank you so much for attending, and you guys will send the link tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.